Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in our Talks with Walt as we are calling our readings through the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We are in the Calamus section and we turn now to a little poem called The Base of All Metaphysics. Now this is another one of those philosophic poems as we have talked about it um, of the terrible doubt of appearances is of course the uh, passage that we just studied in Calamus and now we're going to come to a second philosophic kind of rendering. Now my assumptions here with you are that you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net all the way from the inscriptions. Of course the Eidolans poem that I've already spoken about. You'll want to see that one down that left hand side in the Talks with Walt folder. And I'm hoping that you've been following our stuff all the way through and up including the, uh, the poems of the Calamus section. Now our Nortons here for background information will uh, give us some, some uh, real brief information here. This poem was added to the Calamus group in 1871, and it, in many ways, uh, Norton says, sublimates the sentiment of adhesiveness, that, that's that term of a related to um, uh, brotherly love and the like, to lofty universal principle, namely, of course, love. A manuscript draft has actually the title for this poem is The Professor's Answer. We're going to hear the professorial voice of, of Whitman here. And then finally, Norton says, an assiduous note-taker, Whitman had a general, not a dialectical, interest in philosophy. And, and, and there's been a lot made of how much philosophy Whitman actually read and actually understood. He's going to mention a number of philosophers here, both Greek as well as German. It's clear that Whitman was really self-educated. And because he was self-educated, he had certain kinds of insights to his studies that would have been different from an academic kind of preparation. Let's turn to the poem now, the base of all metaphysics, and obviously we've got to talk about the word base, and obviously the, the term metaphysics as well. And now, gentlemen, a word I give to remain in your memories and minds as base and finale to for all metaphysics. So did the students, the old professor at the close of this crowded course. Having studied the new and antique, the Greek and Germanic systems, Kant having studied, and stated, and Fichte, and Schilling, and Hegel, stated the lore of Plato and Socrates greater than Plato, and greater than Socrates sought and stated Christ divine, having studied long. I see reminiscent today those Greek and Germanic systems, see the philosophies all Christian churches and tenets see, yet underneath Socrates clearly see, and underneath Christ the divine I see, the dear love of man for his comrade, the attraction of friend to friend, of the well-married husband and wife, of children and parents, of city for city, and land for land. I actually want to begin uh, by just pointing out that in the Calamus section, notice all of these poems have as their title the first line, with the exception of a poem like this one, the base of all metaphysics is the title of the poem, but the poem begins with, and now gentlemen, and so there's a certain kind of voice that wants to be uh, used here. And Whitman is very much trying, I think, to take us back to the opening lines, if you'll remember them with me briefly, of Song of Myself, Passage 1. Do you remember what he says, creeds and school in abeyance, retiring back a while, suffice that what they are, but never forgotten, I harbor for good or bad, I permit to speak at every hazard, nature without check with original energy, and obviously we explicated those lines a while ago, but I just want the echo to be here as we go through this. Now, first of all, what do we mean by a base? Here, of course, we're talking about that which is fundamental. In other words, this is what I'm going to build everything I understand about philosophy, and we would even say a religion, creeds and schools and abeyance. Creeds being the religious component, schools would obviously be this whole study of things like philosophy. So we're looking for something foundational. We are obviously to the Integral Project, and we've spoken often about how the Integral Project in 303 will, will always stand behind our goal to try to draw in as many alternate views as possible. We're playing a very Whitman-esque game when we're doing this Integral Project. Now, what do we mean by metaphysics? Well, of course, we go back to our lecture on Plato and the Republic and Book 6 and Book 7 of the Cave Allegory of Book 7. And that idea that the two boxes, as you guys will often refer to it, that is to say we have the box that is the physical, the physical uh, body, the beautiful body, and then of course we have the 
metaphysical, that which is beyond the physical, that of the second box. Namely, of course, we're going to have a beautiful body in the first box, but we'll have the concept of beauty in the second box. And so here is what we mean by metaphysics. Now, of course, in Whitman's day, we've said this, he loved the modern science, he also loved the new philosophies, and obviously Emerson is standing behind a whole lot of this poem, especially Emerson's essays and lectures, like over soul, of course. Notice we'll begin with this voice, this professorial voice, and now, gentlemen, he'll take this professor's voice, very much like with learned astronomer when we study that poem, very similar. A word, we think immediately, of course, of the power of that notion of that word, logos will be the word that's used in John 1 of the New Testament. I give to remain in your memories and minds, and we cannot lose so much of what Whitman always longed for, was to be remembered long after the fact. So he says, I'm going to say something to you that I hope you can remember as, and then he'll use the word base. Now here base can have a pejorative or a negative meaning. Oh, that's a base idea. But here we're meaning as Whitman, again, as person raised around architects, around builders, he understands the foundation. We cannot help but think about those final lines from Thoreau's Walden. We gave these lectures a while ago. You can look them up on LearnStrong.net. If you have built castles in the air, that's where they belong. Now put the foundations under them. That's exactly what King Whitman is playing here. A base and finale, too, for all metaphysics. Notice how the word all gets used a couple of times in this poem. That is to say all encompassing. And then the parenthetics, so the students, to the students, they notice it's an old professor at the close of his crowded course. In other words, imagining Whitman as educator, Whitman as pedagogue. Remember, this is one of our five P's of Whitman because he started out as an instructor. And as I said in my lecture on Song of Myself, passage 46, 47, I don't think Whitman ever left his love of education as being his central motivation to share the ideas and leaves of grass. Again, Whitman had an idea that if he could only share his book of poems with America, he could somehow keep the horrific war from happening. That, of course, did happen. Then he begins to talk about his own studies. Now, we've seen this about his studies before. He's mentioned it a number of times already in Leaves of Grass. We're going to see it again. Having studied the new and antique. Now, this is where we get our line. The new is the new. That is to say the N-E-W is the K-N-E-W, right? It seems always so brand new, and yet his argument is it's very ancient. It's very old. Notice it's new and antique. The Greek and Germanic systems, and of course, these are the two systems with which the world at the time was grappling. Of course, the Greek system will be our holy trinity of Plato, Socrates, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. And of course, in the Germanic, this would be the more modern understandings, and he'll mention four of those in, in Kant, in Fichte, in Schilling, and in Hegel. We've given lectures about those uh, philosophers elsewhere at LearnStrong.net. Having studied and stated Fichte, Schilling, Hegel, stated the lore of Plato. By the way, this is the only use of these names in all of Leaves of Grass. Plato only gets mentioned the one time here. And Socrates, he says, greater than Plato, of course, the teacher greater than the student in that regard. And greater than Socrates, sought and stated, Christ divine, having studied long. Now, I'm going to not say too much about Whitman's Christian views until I get to maybe his most famous poem, To Him That Was Crucified, and, and, and we'll have more to say about this idea when we meet that set of lines. But notice that he is bringing together three strands of thought. You could argue three uh, philosophic strands, because standing behind his reference to Christ in Christian theology, obviously, is St. Augustine. And so we're having here, notice, the Greek tradition of, again, uh, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. We're having the German tradition, and then, obviously, the Christian tradition from St. Augustine. Obviously, Aquinas would fall in there as well, right? Notice he says, greater than Socrates sought and stated, Christ divine having studied long. So in other words, he says, I've spent a long time studying all these amazing great thinkers. I see, reminiscent today, notice the spelling of today with a hyphen, right? Those Greek and Germanic systems see the philosophies, notice he says philosophies, not theologies, all, again the use of that word, Christian churches and tenancy, again I go back to those lines from Song of Myself, Passage 1, Creeds and Schools and Abeyance, yet underneath, there's our word base, Socrates, clearly see, and underneath Christ, the divine, I see. So in other words, what is foundational to both the Socratic as well as the Christian understanding and worldview? And here he will provide it for us. He'll call it the dear 
love of man for his comrade. Now, we've seen this word comrade so many times right through the course of our reading. We will continue to hear it in Calabas section especially. The attraction, that's that adhesiveness concept of friend to friend, and they have three of these ofs. Of the well-married husband and wife, of children and parents, I said three, I should have said four. Of city for city and land for land. Well, what is the argument that he's making? It's actually a very simple argument. It's a compelling argument. And it says the following, that behind all of these systems of thought, these disciplines, these academic philosophic disciplines, what is it that is foundational? And that is love. The love for one another. The willingness to take care. Notice all of his different kinds of representations of love. Friend to friend, well-married husband and wife, children and parents, Notice how we're going further and further out, right? City for city, land for land. Of course, land here could be nation as well for nation. In other words, this idea of the ubiquity of love. And when we get to passage uh, to India, uh, one of the poems that we'll have to study later at Leaves of Grass, he'll be playing that game literally at the worldwide level. It is a compelling argument. And in 2A, there obviously is our major message. That is to say, there is nothing greater than love. And it would be Whitman who would point out that if the New Testament speaks of a loving God, it also speaks as God as love itself. And to that degree, love and God are for Whitman synonymous. It's a compelling theological idea as well. And to me, I love the fact that Whitman will use only the names of Socrates and Plato one time in all of Leaves of Grass, and it will be here. It makes this poem to that degree somewhat significant, unique. At 3A, I would just point out, as I've mentioned already, two other poems of Whitman to him that was crucified. And when I heard the learned astronomer, both of those will be poems that we'll come back to when we study them. We'll come back to this poem. I also want to mention, as many scholars have, the criticism argument that Freud will make in his Civilizations and its Discontents, we've lectured this elsewhere, that it is interesting that Freud would make a very similar kind of argument that standing behind all of human motivation is the longing for some kind of love of, uh, he, he wouldn't use the term comrade, but he certainly was aware of the way that term would be used, especially by Marx, of course. Finally, at 3b, I like this question as it relates to this poem. For you, what is the foundation? For you, what is the base? For you, what is that which is underneath all of your learning, all of your uh, curious uh, desire for knowledge? What is it that stands as foundational? Is it in fact true to say that the most important thing in your life is in fact something as simple as love? And then if you have that, you have everything that you need. What an interesting concept. I hope that you're being challenged by these poems from the Calamus section of Leaves of Grass. Thank you.